Good day, AP Biology students. Welcome to video lecture episode seven. Today we're going to be continuing to work our way through chapter 30. Remember, chapter 30, we're talking about angiosperm reproduction. We're talking about plants. All right. Now, looking at the slide eight, you're going to see a graphic that indicates the different types of fruit there are. There is simple fruit, aggregate fruit, multiple fruit, and accessory fruit. And the images give not only the names that I just listed, but as well as examples of each of those. Now, moving into slide nine, we're going to talk about seeds. Mature seeds are in what we call dormancy, resting. They have a low metabolic rate, growth and development is temporarily suspended, and resumes growth when environmental conditions are suitable for germination. Hence the reason you see the flower showing up in the springtime when it's most uh, profitable and when conditions are right. Uh, slide 10 shows how seeds can be dispersed by wind and gives some examples like the tumbleweed, the dandelion seed, and even uh, the fruit of a maple actually has winged fruit. In other words, it's made in such a way that it is uh, optimally uh, transported by the wind. We also see one image indicating dispersal by water, and that is coconut seed embryo, endosperm, and endocarp inside buoyant husk, which if you look at the images, float near the water and therefore can be traveled and transported for later dispersal. Now, dispersal also happens by animals, and you see some examples of that in slide 11, how there's an ant carrying one, there's also the one that's in, obviously, bear feces, meaning the bear has consumed this, and then has gone to the bathroom, and then, of course, the manure helps actually fertilize the seed and helps them to germinate, and then we see the, the squirrel even saving some seeds for later, which, in the process of doing so, some of them do end up germinating. Now let's look at slide 12 and let's talk a little bit about germination. Seed takes up water through imbibition, which triggers metabolic changes to begin growth. Roots develop, shoots emerges, leaves expand and turn green for photosynthesis. Very hazardous for plants due to vulnerability. And what I mean by vulnerability is that predators, parasites and wind can actually interrupt this process. So they're actually in a very vulnerable stage as they're beginning their growth. Now let's look at uh, slide 13 and compare uh, sexual and asexual reproduction in plants. Within sexual reproduction, you have the flower through seeds, uh, genetic diversity, more complex and hazardous for seedlings, and by hazardous, we were talking about that on the previous slide. Advantages in unstable environments, they just can actually thrive, which is, it's interesting that they have an advantage in unstable environments. Now through asexual or vegetative reproduction, we have runners, bulbs, grafts, cuttings, and vegetative grass, fragmentation, test tube cloning. Those are just examples of how this looks, so to speak. Um, what they do is producing clones. In other words, they copy themselves. Uh, they, it is simpler because no pollinator is needed since the reproduction is being done by the plant itself, and it's suited for stable environments. In other words, asexual reproduction is best in places that are stable environments. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap up today with slide 14, uh, just showing some examples of asexual reproduction, one in the aspen trees, and then also an example of test tube cloning, and that particular being of carrots. All right, I do hope this lecture has been helpful, and I look forward to seeing your comments below and interacting with any questions you may have. Have a nice day. Goodbye.